The pour plate technique using serial dilutions is one method for quantifying bacteria in a sample. A dilution is created by measuring a volume or weight of a sample and adding it to a volume of sterile water, thus making the resulting solution less concentrated than the original. When we repeat this process for each new tube, thus making a series of more and more dilute samples, it is called a serial dilution. In this illustration, a series of 1 plus 9, or 1 in 10 dilutions, yields a tenfold serial dilution. When these serial dilutions are combined with agar and incubated, the microbiologist can then make a count of the resulting colonies, which can be used to estimate the number of viable bacteria in the original sample. We're going to estimate the number of viable bacteria on alfalfa sprouts. Because the quantity of bacteria on these sprouts is unknown, we'll do a series of dilutions to ensure we are able to accurately estimate that quantity. Let's look now at the calculations involved in making serial dilutions. Each dilution blank contains 9 milliliters of sterile distilled water. 1 milliliter of a liquid sample transferred to 9 milliliters gives 1 milliliter of sample in a total volume of 10 milliliters. 1 over 10 can also be written as 0 0.1, which is equal to 10 to the negative 1. Thus, the dilution of the first tube is 10 to the negative 1. If a solid sample is used instead, 1 gram of sample is considered the equivalent of 1 milliliter of a liquid sample. 1 gram of solid sample transferred to the first 9 milliliter dilution blank is also considered a 10 to the negative 1 dilution. If we transfer 1 milliliter of the 10 to the negative 1 dilution, to the second 9 milliliter dilution blank, that transfer is also a 10 to the negative 1 dilution. But the total dilution in the second tube is now the product of the two dilutions, or 10 to the negative 1 multiplied by 10 to the negative 1. Remember, whenever you multiply two terms with the same base, you add the exponents. So the total dilution in tube 2 is 10 to the negative 2. It's important to note that there are alternate methods for performing a serial dilution other than the 1 milliliter in 9 milliliter scheme. One of the most common alternate dilution schemes uses 99 milliliter dilution bottles. In this case, 1 milliliter in 99 milliliters is a 1 to 100 or 10 to the negative 2 dilution. Let's review how to calculate dilutions using our original 1 milliliter in 9 milliliter dilution scheme. For any single dilution, you will divide the amount transferred by the new total volume of that tube, the sum of that amount transferred and the amount already present in the dilution blank. Don't forget, a single dilution is only the dilution you've just made with the current transfer. Calculating a single dilution does not take into account that the source of that transfer may be already diluted. To calculate the total dilution in any one dilution tube, you must multiply the dilution of the transfer, the single dilution, by the dilution of the previous dilution tube, the tube from which the transferred amount was taken. Now that we know how to calculate dilutions, Let's use our serial dilution method to estimate the number of bacteria on sprouts. First, label each blank with the total dilution it would have. Aseptically weigh one gram of sprouts. Using aseptic technique, remove the cap from the first nine milliliter dilution blank, flame the mouth, then use forceps to transfer sprouts to the blank. Flame and recap the tube. This is the 10 to the negative 1 dilution, since we're adding 1 gram of sprouts to 9 milliliters of sterile water. Recall, if using a liquid sample, such as water or milk, we would simply transfer 1 milliliter of sample to the first 9 milliliter dilution blank 
to create this 10 to the negative 1 dilution. Hold the tube at an angle and mix the contents, either with a vortex mixer or by flicking the tube vigorously with your index finger. Use a sterile pipette to make each subsequent transfer. Open the pipette wrapper at the top and attach the aspirator while holding the pipette by its wrapper. Do not touch the pipette with your hands. Using aseptic technique, transfer one milliliter from the 10 to the negative one dilution to the 10 to the negative two dilution blank. Mix the contents well. This 10 to the negative 2 dilution can now be used to create the next dilution. Being careful to avoid contamination, insert a new pipette into the aspirator. Then, pick up the 10 to the negative 2 dilution and aseptically withdraw 1 milliliter. Remove 1 milliliter from the 10 to the negative 2 dilution and transfer to the next 9 milliliter dilution blank. You have now created a 10 to the negative 3 dilution. Then, make the remaining transfers in the dilution scheme. If your dilution scheme requires you to use 99 milliliter dilution bottles, you will mix the contents by shaking the bottle 20 times through a 35 centimeter arc. Once all of the dilutions have been made, Transfer inoculum to empty sterile petri dishes. In this example, we will plate the last four dilutions. The melted triptychase soy agar should be kept in a warm water bath between 45 and 50 degrees Celsius. If the agar is too hot, it will kill the bacteria. If the agar is too cold, it will solidify in the vessel or as it is poured into the cold petri dishes. Wipe the outside of the vessel with a paper towel, being careful not to contaminate the mouth. Gently swirl the nutrient agar, taking care not to make bubbles. Remove the plug with the pinky and ring finger of the hand that lifts the plate lid. Flame the mouth of the vessel. Use your thumb and forefinger to remove the lid from the plate. Pour 12 to 15 milliliters of the melted agar into the plate so that it is about one-third full. Immediately replace the lid. Swirl the plate gently. Repeat this procedure for all plates. After all plates have been poured, flame and re-plug the flask. Set aside. Gently swirl the poured plates for about 30 seconds. Don't let the agar splash onto the lid or over the edge. Then, leave the plates to cool so the agar can solidify. The solidified agar is more opaque than the liquid. After the agar has solidified, invert plates and incubate at 35 to 37 degrees Celsius for at least 24 hours. Plate counts assume that each live bacterium grows to produce a single colony. In reality, some cells remain clumped and can also form a single colony. Therefore, Results are reported as colony forming units, or CFUs, per milliliter or gram of a sample, instead of cells per milliliter or gram. To obtain a statistically reliable estimate of the quantity of bacteria in your sample, select the plate that contains between 30 and 300 colonies. In this set of plates, that would be the third plate. Plates with too many colonies to count are labeled TNTC, which stands for too numerous to count. Plates that have fewer than 30 colonies are labeled TFTC, which stands for too few to count. Not all colonies will be on the surface because some bacteria were trapped in the agar as it solidified. These colonies are noticeably smaller and elliptical. Even these embedded colonies must be counted. To calculate the number of bacteria per gram or per milliliter of the original sample, 
use this formula. The number of colonies on the countable plate is multiplied by the reciprocal of the dilution of the plate counted. In our example, there were 89 colonies on the plate with a dilution of 10 to the negative 5. We multiply the 89 colonies by the reciprocal of that dilution, 10 to the 5th, to achieve a result of 89 times 10 to the 5th CFU per gram. Simplified to two significant figures, the concentration is expressed as 8.9 times 10 to the 6th CFU per gram. After recording your data, properly discard your plates for autoclaving.